Hello, I'm Joseph Albro, an undergraduate researcher in Dr. Jeremy Levy's research group at the University of Pittsburgh, and today I'll be talking to you about cryogenic piezo force microscopy of sketch lanthanum aluminate strontium titanate nanostructures. So before I begin, I'm going to talk about the material we work with, uh, which is lanthanum aluminate strontium titanate. It exhibits many interesting properties, uh, such as a high mobility two-dimensional electron gas. It has a metal to insulated transition of approximately four unit cell uh, critical thickness. It exhibits superconductivity at low temperatures, magnetism, and tunable spin orbit coupling, among other different uh, other properties. And I also want to talk really quickly about a technique called uh, local probes. So local probes are essentially taking uh, measurements of some property as a function of position. So in this case, Kalitsky et al. Um, was able to show enhanced transport in the direction of tetragonal domain walls, which form at 105 Kelvin when strontium titanate um, undergoes a cubic to tet tetragonal transition. So basically scanning superconducting quantum interference device or squid microscopy has revealed this. And so basically this is the direction of the domain walls. And this is the uh, transport, as you can see, is in this direction. And they basically cycle the temperature above 105 Kelvin and then back down again to uh, basically reform domain walls um, in different orientations to show that this is just not a one uh, specific case. This happens every time. Um, and similar motivation uh, using local probes comes from scanning a single electron transistor or scanning set microscopy which provided a map of tetragonal domains. And um, in addition to that, it also provides their orientation. So here you can see that uh, there's, a, for example, this is an X domain. And inside of the domain, there's very little transport. However, at the border between two domains or the domain wall, there is um, a large amount of transport. So we now know that the transport basically happens at these domain walls. Um, and then there's another uh, one more type of local probes that is a strong motivation for this uh, experiment done by Franken et al., uh, which basically essentially they applied pressure and measured the change in voltage under a constant current. So they used a um, atomic force microscope tip to push on the sample, and by locally applying force to the domain walls, they're able to gate strontium titanate. So you can see here that basically this is a domain wall. Um, and this is a map of the change in voltage. So using um, basically, these are all two dimensional properties that have been looked at in lanthanum aluminate strontium titanate. Um, however, we use a conductive uh, atomic force microscope lithography technique to basically confine these two dimensional properties to a one dimensional nanowire. So this starts at the manufacturing stage of the samples. So by applying just under the critical thickness of lanthanum aluminate on top of bulk strontium titanate and then applying uh, gold titanium contacts at the interface to measure the properties of this two-dimensional electron gas. Um, we could bring a conductive atomic force microscope tip into contact with the sample and by positively biasing the tip we can apply protons to the surface um, which corresponds to electrons at the interface by uh, locally top gating. And, um, these nanowires are as small as two nanometers wide. And one of the most powerful points of this is that basically by applying a negative bias to the tip, we can remove the protons from the surface and create things like barriers or completely erase the nanostructures that we've just created. So this is important for two reasons. Um, the first being that it allows us to create very intricate devices through um, an iterative process using um, writing and erasing. And in addition to that, if we make a mistake, we could just erase and start over again. So fun fact, um, so this presentation was supposed to happen in Colorado. Um, unfortunately, the conference was canceled. However, uh, this technique that I just described was first presented 13 years ago at the 2007 Denver, Colorado March meeting. So here is a picture of the abstract. And then a year later is published in Nature Materials. Um, so with this technique, we could create many interesting devices such as sketch field effect transistors, single electron transistors, um, you can study things, uh, a phenomena such as anomalous high mobility at room temperature, non-local transport, fabry perot interference, and we could also look at things like reconfigurable superconducting nanoelectronics. Um, so we've used this idea of local probes um, before in a group to non-destructively image the carrier density uh, by exploiting something called the reverse piezoelectric effect. So essentially, if you run a current through one of these nanowires, it's going to expand and contract. 
and by uh, using that AC current and measuring the tip deflection of an atomic force microscope tip as a function of position, um, we are able to basically create a map of where the uh, nanowire is. Um, and the way we'd measure this before would be actually cause our nanowires to get ruined. Um, so we would essentially cut them by applying a negative bias to the tip with respect to the sample um, and use, measure the conductance as a function of position. So cut the nanowire and then by taking the derivative of that um, and using the full width that have max, we'd get a good approximation of how wide the nanowire, nanowires were. Um, but in this case, we actually don't have to destroy our devices, which is a huge plus. So we want to do the opposite of that, is we actually want to push down on the nanowires and measure the change in current through them. So the way we do this is we basically have a function generator, which is set at a frequency close to uh, the resonant frequency, resonant frequency of the tip in, uh, in contact with the sample. And we use that to drive the piezoelectric drive element of the atomic force microscope. So we're pushing the tip into the sample. Um, and then we're also using that as the reference to uh, for a lock-in amplifier which is measuring the drain current of some device such as a field effect transistor or a single electron transistor. Um, and basically we'll plot the amplitude of the resulting uh, drain current at that frequency as a function of position using an atomic force microscope, con uh, the controller. So we have some preliminary results here. So this is a three terminal device, um, uh, has an insulating tip and we held the gate constant. And then um, we scanned over the device in this case uh, in contact mode applying pressure at uh, 107 kilohertz, and we apply to the drain current as a function of the tip position. So here's the, uh, the data basically overlaid with um, a diagram of the uh, geometry of the device. So you can see as we go over the junction here, there basically is a decrease in current. Um, and to overlay it for uh, better viewing, you can see that it's um, pretty well confined to the junction of this device. Um, furthermore, we also did this once again with a more stiffer tip that allowed us to apply frequent, uh, pressure at a higher frequency, and we also created a much smaller device. Um, and you can see here that the basically um, the drop in drain current happens almost exactly over the barrier junction that we created here. Um, once again, in overlaying that uh, the device geometry over the results, you can see that it's pretty well localized. Um, however, these uh, tetragonal domain molds, um, since they have to do with the conduct, uh, the transport of the sample, or sorry, of the device, we expect, um, we want to try this at low temperature where they formed. So in order to do that, we basically need a low temperature atomic force microscope. So what we've done is we've taken a vacuum uh, atomic force microscope and we've upgraded it to a cold temperature system. Initially, we used a pulse tube. However, that proved to be too noisy. Um, and also, it didn't have enough cooling power. So ideally, we want to get below um, 10 Kelvin, but we could perform this experiment uh, reliably at below 25 Kelvin. And unfortunately, that was just out of the reach for the um, pulse tube. So recently, we replaced the pulse tube with a helium flow cryostat, which is much less uh, mechanically noisy and also has a much more cooling power. Uh, so what I've been doing is basically I've been um, uh, creating this low temperature atomic force microscope system. So in order to do that, I needed to create a software basically. So to integrate things like the temperature readings and the pressure readings, uh, as, long, as well as results from the atomic force microscope. And also there's other um, software that's needed to basically combine all these different moving parts for the data acquisition itself. So with the normal vacuum microscope, it wasn't too unmanageable, but it gets a little unwieldy uh, for a low temperature system. And we also, I uh, had the cryostat and the microscope lifted uh, using a crane to better basically be closer to the height of the doers um, for the helium flow cryostat. And I also wanted to make sure that everything that I designed uh, integrated with the existing system. So for example, we use rails here uh, and this holds the cryostat uh, and it slides back and forth. So that way um, we can basically into the existing uh, stuff for the pulse tube. So at this time I also took, or at this point I also took the time to redo the electronics. Um, so basically this required a um, redesign of the sample holder. So this was the old sample holder um, and this was the pulse tube or the cryostat. And uh, it's connected with the flexible link and the atomic force microscope head, which is shown here, rests on top of this and um, scans this sample holder. 
so in the news design, the AFM still rests above the chip carrier. Um, but we also decided to add, or I decided to add a magnet, basically to prevent uh, any damage to the piezo tube while we're handling the tip samples. Oh, sorry, the the samples. Um, and also, I designed feed throughs for the vacuum system using a Fisher 24 pin connection, uh, which is standard in our lab. So, in addition to the electronics, we are I decided to go with a breadboard uh, design, like an optical breadboard for the top of the table for basically management since there's a lot more moving parts now. Um, for example, there's like water uh, lines and helium gas lines, and there's also data acquisition and lines for the microscope. Um, and also, as another side note, basically we've measured the base temperature of the system to be around 6 Kelvin, which is right in the range that we want it to be, below 10 Kelvin um, comfortably. So, in summary, uh, conductive AFM lithography allows for the creation of oxide nanostructures. And this technique of using local probes uh, could offer unique insight into the basically the physics behind um, the properties of lanthanum aluminate strontium titanate. And I also proposed a method of cryogenic force microscopy at low temperatures uh, using a modified vacuum atomic force microscope. So as we all know, uh, March meeting was canceled, but here's a list of the talks from our group. You can find them on levylab.org, or you can also find them on their respective uh, APS March meeting abstract um, websites. So thank you for watching.